You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale: Marion's Path. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes as I entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you're up, and let's go. All right. It's not just the way she looks, or even me needing to look past her new body. She carries about her an aura that is brighter than us all. She's the embodiment of what's left in this world that is honest, pure, and good. I wave and catch her eye. I hope I'm not interrupting. Never. I was just pondering what's to come. What I've been told today. There's so much running at full speed through my head. That's understandable. When I'd last left her, she seemed so distant. Now to look at her, I can see hope blooming from within. You look more at peace. I'm hoping I'm not jumping to grand conclusions. Oh. Marion offers her hand, which I take eagerly. Her fingers, while dark and fused, are still hers. The curl around my palm. Thank you for coming back. It's been quite a day, huh? It certainly has. I've, I've come to a conclusion. Something I've always heard and never believed to the extent I believe it now. She looks deeply into my eyes. Ours is not to reason why, Malcolm. Marion shrugs and squeezes my hands. Not, not, not that saying it really stops the brain from working overtime, though, does it? Huh, no, but it's worth reminding myself. Besides, it keeps me sane while thinking of other things. I don't press for more, but Marion must sense my concern. She lowers her voice to a whisper. It's what I'm most ashamed to say. The breeze takes hold of her hair and Marion's skirt. I watch her tail flow back and forth in the wind. What Marion says next hits me like a punch to the gut. I don't think I want to change. I mean it. I don't want to change back. But knowing how to respond, I choose only honesty. I wish you told me. I'm telling you now. It's painful. Like admitting something horrible. I wasn't even being honest with myself. Uh, being caught up in the fear of what people would think, or that I might end up one of them. Oh. Fiona nuzzles Marion, apparently not taking offense. After everything today, the church, the pub, outside under the alders and inside under the quilts, at the end of the day, if Alana's right, this is me. You trust her? I can't say if I do, but I think... No, I know she's right. I can tell deep inside, and all those worries aside, it's not so bad. Good, even. I'm still scared. I'm most worried that you will stop loving me because of the way I look. Marion tilts her head up at me, and she smiles, hopefully. But I can't go back. We can't go backwards. The pain inside me evaporates before the warmth of her smile. All that she's been through, and she still only wants to be seen as a good person. That which she already is, what she always has been. Perfect. Marion, I never want to go backwards. I want to be with you, all of you, just as you are. I can't tell you how many times I pictured hearing you say that. Is this real? Are you real, Malcolm, M Malcolm Campbell? Oh, it's all very real, Marion. We've come back into each other's lives for a reason. That, well, as you said, we, we ought not to question. But here we are, side by side. My world has been turned upside down today. Yes, but maybe upside down is your right side up. Perhaps. In fact, I've come to a decision. I, I want to embrace my true nature. I think I like being Fae. Part of something magic. At least I want to like it, if that makes sense. Oddly enough, it does. You never know, there may be benefits to this. Do you really think so? She sounds hopeful, and for a moment I believe that maybe I can even convince myself to be excited by her changes. Why not? From here, your life is in your hands. You mean my hooves? Marion lets out a genuine laugh, and my heart melts like usual. Accept what, is, accept what is good and make it better. Take the bull by the horns? Yes, exactly, whatever this is. You being a changeling, it's most certainly part of the village's history. It's, myst it's mysticism. Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, the two of us are sounding a bit delusional, but romance is intoxicating. All of a sudden, we are two young people in love instead of in turmoil. It's a feeling I never want to lose. I look at you. I only see Marion, the woman I love. You still love me? Of course, Marion. Always, forever. Malcolm, I, I love you too, but I have one more confession. My heart stops. I don't know if I can handle any more surprises today. I seal myself for the worst. More of an apology, really. 
Do you remember when I came by the day Jesse left, and I told you that, that you couldn't save everyone? I do remember. It cut like a knife when she said it, but I realized I w it was in the heat of the moment. I truly apologize. I never should have said such a thing. Malcolm, you completely saved me. You could never know all the good you've given this world. My throat catches. I don't want her to see me cry, but I just can't stop the tears. Tears that have been building for hours, perhaps weeks. Marion, nothing you could say would hurt me. I know you meant no harm. I feel as though there's nothing to forgive. You're so full of kindness. I don't deserve you. I feel the same way. I never imagined being loved for all that I am. She holds me tight and leans in for a kiss. Ah. It's the first time I've kissed her mouth since her changes. Her top lip is broad and soft like a hide blanket. It's not like leather, though it's pillowy. My lips sink into hers as I glide them along the top of her open mouth. The softness to her skin makes my face feel like it is being brushed with, co with piled cotton. As her tongue slides across mine, I sense its increase in size and length. Instead of being alarmed, it turns me on even more. Her muzzle is warm and lightly damp. She still tastes delicious like honeysuckle. Banger, banger, banger. We stay connected that way, kissing and offering gentle touches until the sun begins to dip below the horizon. We offer that we go inside for dinner, but she declines, preferring to remain in the pasture. It's not like our first, not like unlike our first night together, which I have to remind myself was not so long ago. We stay outside for many more hours, counting the stars and our blessings. Oh, wonderful couple. Did you bang? Oh, I guess not. Okay. Alright. As the days move forward, Marion seems to come to terms with her new identity. She's possessed with a renewed strength, the likes of which I'm envious, and I can only hope to mirror. Like it or not, Grace and I are along for the ride. We support Marion both literally and figuratively. Sometimes she needs a lift in spirits. Other times, she needs another type of lift to help balance on her new hooves. The ups and downs are a wee bit more extreme than I would like, but the highs are high and the lows do pass with time. Now that we're all past the initial shock and take each day with resolve and determination, we've relaxed into a new routine. An average day with Marion is all I could ever need. I join her at her homestead after my daily chores, staying with her well into the evening. I'm relieved that she does not shy away from physical contact anymore. She welcomes more than just hand-holding, and showing our affection comes easily now, although we have set boundaries. We often fall asleep in each other's arms only to wake separately so as not to disturb Grand's sense of decorum. Grand gives me no grief on the nights I come back from the fields long after the sun is set. She knows where I am, and we speak nothing of it beyond shared smiles and nods. The fact that she approves of my courtship of Marion only adds to my joy. Grand's capacity for acceptance, to look at Marion as more than some alien, bovine being, astonishes me. As for my own ability to see Marion for more than her non-traditional appearance, it comes from a place deep within me that, he, that even I don't comprehend. Grant assures me that the Campbells are, are men of honor, with an esteemed arrival in the other clans. As much as I want to disagree, I believe there is a patience I possess that is unlike that of the others. Either a patience, I, uh, either a patience or an Ayavet, I do not know. may even be a link to the Fey world, real or imagined, a theory my grandparents would be proud of given their penchant for fairy tales. Or perhaps it's just a psychological survival tactic carried over from the trenches, or a lingering effect of Alana's brew. Who knows? The bottom line is I accept others as they are. I always have. There's no reason to judge a, to judge any, to judge any, to judge another unless they give you one. And judgment aside, Marion is beyond needing acceptance. Her heart outshines any other I've ever, I've ever encountered. I've made mention of commitment, marriage even, but Marion shies away from the topic. I'm made to understand that she isn't against it, she's just not ready. I worry she's too self-conscious to recite her vows with a tail in her fur coat. I assure her that the woman I want with me forever is the one she is right now. In fact, I can hardly abide a moment not by her side. It's a typical chill morning when I, re when I prepare to make my way back over to the McLeod farm. I'd only left their, hour their hours earlier. Hello, Hazel. But I had to be back for you, didn't I? Hazel huffs a good morning at me, or perhaps something less flattering. Good morning to you, too. Let's see what's on the menu, shall we? Ha! <laughs> yep, ah, she's happy. I pull a few dusty carrot stumps from my pockets, and she eagerly yanks them from my grasp. 
Edge's tracks are just long enough to get her tack on. I wouldn't usually ride Hazel over to, the over to the next yard, but today is a market day, and with Marion homebound, it's up to us to run the errands and deliver her goods. Hazel, my gal, you're in for a treat today, and not just the edible kind. Once we're done loading your cart, you get to see all your friends next door. She swallows the last carrot whole, and hoofs loudly, either at the prospect of pulling a loaded cart or at the notion that anyone is her friend. Hmm. Or perhaps she hoofs at either, at neither. She's just a horse, after all. Something I, need, I keep needing to remind myself again and again. God. Hazel is so cute. And bitchy. And load the last of today's market hall into the cloud storehouse and take a step back. A step back outside. The wind is picking up, and so I pull my jacket tighter around me. A bit cold and nippy today, eh, Miss Hazel? It occurs to me. I could be describing either the weather or my horse. I check to see that she hasn't chewed through her tether again. All right, lass. I'll be back shortly. I'm off to find her friends. The day is still going young, and the sisters aren't home, presumably out doing their morning chores. Sure enough, I find Marion in the nearby field, huddled down by Fiona, performing milking duties. How she must feel about that task now, given the circumstances. I've certainly been put in a new light. Probably best not to think about it too hard. No. Instead, I come up behind her and tug her ears. She jumps up and nearly topples over her bucket of milk. Malcolm, you silly old goat. Gold goat. I gather her up in my arms and plant a huge kiss on her lips. Oh. Hey, who are you calling old? I'm almost two whole years younger than you. Oh, I don't know. Oh, don't I know? You don't have to remind me. If you guys are wondering, that a cat is ripping into a box over there. That's what that sound is. You don't have to remind me. You're also not a. You're also not a goat, as far as I'm aware. She reaches behind me and yanks at my knickers. Oh ho ho! Mind your manners, Miss McLeod. No tail yet. But you could always check for one later. Malcolm, get to work. I barely got any sleep last night. If you help me finish up early, maybe I can actually get to bed before midnight today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As usual, I grab a stool and help her milk the cows. Fiona is still not a big fan of mine, despite my efforts to be gentle. Yeah, she tosses a hoof my way, and I duck like I've been trained. Fiona just prefers a tender touch of a woman. Don't we all? We haul the milk into the barn where Marion has constructed her own cheese-making station. A few chickens cluck by underfoot while we set up. After we skim the cream, we pour the milk into a large wooden vat. It's already nearly full to the top. Goodness, Marion, did you get another few? Did you get another few head of cattle? No, this is all from the same old gals. They've been much more productive lately. Happier too. They must be. I've never seen so much milk from just a few cows. The other dairy farmers in the valley would be jealous. Well, I'll be. He must have a magic touch. Marion blushes as she dumps in a heap of salt and a sprinkle of rennet. We have submerged some boiling water into the, con into the concoction and step away to wait for the curds to form. Malcolm, do you have any interest in being completely irresponsible this morning? Miss Marion, please do tell me what, might, what that might entail, because I believe I could be convinced. Mm, how about I leave all the linens unwashed, the dishes and scrubs, and the bed unmade? Well, the towels and plates will just will just get dirty again, and the bed sheets are likely to get get rumpled tonight. Just so. In that case, the morning is ours to do as we please. Once the chattering's done, would you like to take a walk somewhere quiet, somewhere private? I will follow you blindly, my dear. Uh oh, what you got planned, gal? <laughs> While we stroll the acres of grassy land, Hazel follows along for a few yards, nudging Marion giving her very intense inhales. I think... I think she's picking up a distinct odor, Malcolm. That of lily powder and sweet cream, no doubt. Oh, stop! Hm. We head into a caron thicket, and Hazel tags along. I pluck a handful of berries, turning to offer them to Marion. Aww! God, she's adorable. But she seems she has seen... But she see... But she is... But see... She, blah, but see... But see, she has already found her own patch. Oh my. Wow, that's beautiful. We make our way to the lock's edge and sit on a rocky mount overlooking the water. The breeze is strong and Marion's hair becomes a wave of auburn silk. The lock's surface is as whipped up as a rough sea, 
as turbulent as my own life has been had been just months ago. I lean into the downy nook of her neck, and the sound of the winds and waves are reduced to a soft whisper. My eyes get watery, and it's not due to the wind. The world was hell, chaos, destruction. Now here beside me, but now here beside Marion, it's hope filled, more joyous than ever before. I turn to Marion, and without speaking, give her a huge kiss. She collapses into me, and we stay connected, safe from the swirling elements around us. Oh. Her embrace fades back into stillness. A powerful tranquility has overtaken me. Mary, thank you for giving me my life back. I owe you so much. I love you. More than you ever could. A pain rises to my chest when I cannot fight off. Tears fall. Malcolm, I... I... She sees my wet cheeks and holds me even tighter. Thank you for loving me. Oh. Emotion passes nearly as fast as it hit, and I appreciate that it's opened me up, made me vulnerable if only for her. Like our protected... Pr like our protected perch above the stirring waters below. Marion is my rock. Horrible fucking couple. I would have spent an eternity with Marion by the lock if I could. Her time in that little corner of heaven is cut short, though. There's a, there's a garden to tend, eggs to collect, cheese to strain. We both know we can't just put off our daily responsibilities indefinitely. But perhaps they can wait a moment more. We spike our tea and pull our chairs close together to chat. Marion's as lighthearted as I remember from her tipsy outing at the pub. And Grace came home so blutered last night, it's a small wonder she didn't fall off all, e all eakin' coming home. Hey, well, Grace is a small wonder. That she is, that rascal. Much to our surprise, Gra Grace now spends evenings at the Stag and Nanny doing odd jobs behind the scenes, mostly on nights when the crowds are low. The coin is good, and apparently so are the benefits. It's Bulgare's way of helping the family financially since Jesse's departure, but why a loner like Grace accepted the job beats me. Perhaps the Whist Club, with its generous helpings of Gimatite's, Gimatite's homemade rum-infused cordial, has given Grace a taste for working at such an establishment. Marion's voice drops to a whisper, even though we have the tro even though we have the whole house to ourselves. Grace got into a very bad crowd, you see, involving her, Felix, Margaret, and the whole bottle of whiskey. Felix and Margaret. But aren't they the only two in town who, dr who don't drink? Exactly so. We both laugh. A Grace managed to down an entire bottle of whiskey without passing out is beyond me. Sometimes I wonder if inside that little, that still, that small frame, she's quite actually, the, she's actually quite the heavyweight. A laughter turns into a sigh, and we sit and smile and sip our brew. All our troubles seem to melt away when we are together. At least most of the time. All of a sudden, Marion's smile, Marion's smile falters. Malcolm, do you think I've become a recluse? Like Grace was before she took this job. It's a subject we've been avoiding mostly, but one present on both our minds. When Marion and I are together, alone, we're a team without rival. The world we built in private is a safe one. One where our one where our troubles are discussed and handled with friendship and support. Alright guys, I'm gonna save it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!